the future belongs to Islam because it's natural. Islam provides for a structured social system based on justice and equality in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no difference. There's no caste system in Islam. Everything and everyone is equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only difference is character, moral, and taqwallahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter if you're black. It doesn't matter if you're white. All are equal in the sight of Allah. And that's why the future belongs to Islam. One of the scholars of that time, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, was asked a question. He was asked by one of the people that lived during those days, and he said, we see that the Mongols, they are drinking alcohol, and they're getting drunk. Should we stop them? Should we stop them and do inkar al-munkar? You know what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said? He said, don't stop them. Let them drink. Because if they're busy drinking, they're not busy killing Muslims. Because they were killing so many Muslims. Ibn Athir, one of the great historians of Islam, he wrote, he, was, he said, I spent two years thinking about writing about this incident and I could not do so. I could not get myself to write because of the gravity of the calamity that has been inflicted upon the ummah. The seriousness of it. And he said, if you were to say that there has never been a calamity that has befallen upon a nation greater than this from the time of Adam until this time, you would not be exaggerating. That's how great the calamity was. Bloodshed all over, Muslims were being killed. The Khalifa and the people in the court were being slaughtered left and right. And he said, I couldn't get myself to write because he, he said, it looked like it was the end of Islam. It was the end of Islam. How could somebody sit down to write about the end of Islam? How could you sit down and write? This is what he wrote because he saw so many Muslims being killed. How could you write? But you know he passed away. And he didn't see the end result. He didn't see what was going to happen. The Mongols, they conquered the Muslims. But Islam conquered their hearts. These same people who killed the Muslims, they became Muslims. And they or the ones who said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And you know, they turned around and went back this way. And they brought La ilaha illallah to India. They were the same people also that went. And they brought Islam to Pakistan, Afghanistan. They came this way. And so, you might think, that there are things that people are working against Islam and so forth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, Yuriduna an yutfi'u nur Allahi bi afwahihim wa ya'ba Allahu illa an yutimma nura وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths. But Allah refuses except to perfect His light. Although the disbelievers hate it. You know with the occurrence of 9-11, you might think that people would be running away from Islam. But after 9-11, more people became curious of Islam. 
And so when you look at statistics in, in, in the United States, for example, before 9-11, there were less people accepting Islam than after 9-11. After 9-11, people started to come into Islam. Till this day, there's not a single week in my masjid in Seattle, except we have at least three people coming and saying, La ilaha illallah. Before 9-11, three people, sometimes we get in three months. Three months we get three people, that's good. Now one week, three people is the minimum. And you know who? Who comes into Islam? The people who come into Islam the most, they're the women. The majority are the women. Why? Look, they're bashing Islam left and right. And especially speaking about the position of women, then why are these women coming into Islam? Because it's the natural religion. When you study it and people start speaking badly about Islam, and then they start reading and they find the truth about it, they say, La ilaha illallah, this is the true religion. I was giving a talk in one of the cities in America, I was speaking about the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there was a woman, a Caucasian white woman sitting on the left side and this was a whole day event, tears were coming down her eyes. She cried the whole day, from the morning until the afternoon, she cried the whole day until finally a sister who was sitting next to her she said sister why are you crying so much and so she said it is because this is what i have been looking for all of my life and god has guided me to it and these were not tears of sadness these were tears of happiness that she found la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and so the sister came, and the sister said, why don't you come forward and speak to the sheikh? Why don't you come forward and speak to the sheikh? And then so I spoke to her, and at that moment in that gathering, at the end of the day, she said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. And this is happening all over, even though the Muslims are not even doing their duty. She didn't see Islam, she didn't learn about Islam because of the Muslims. She didn't learn Islam because of the Muslims. She learned Islam because the media was bashing Islam so much and see what she was curious. Who are these barbaric people? Who are these people? How could they be so evil? And so she started reading about Islam and she said, you know, the media is lying. This is the true religion. And so the future belongs to Islam. Islam will be victorious. But what is it up to us? For us, we ourselves, we have to live Islam and convey this message of Islam. We have to start asking ourselves and ask not what Islam can do for you, but what you can do for Islam. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen ourselves and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has already given us many, many tabshirat, many glad tidings that Islam will be victorious. Wa jazakumullahu khayran wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wow, jazakala khair, Shaykh, that was wonderful, mashallah. The more you hear about it, the more you desire to prepare for it. Life after death. Journey of the soul. The day of resurrection. 
the torment of the hellfire, the reward of paradise. Stay tuned for a life-changing, heart-softening, spiritually uplifting series about the hereafter exclusively on Peace TV. Know the vivid descriptions of paradise and hellfire from the Quran and authentic ahadith and acquire life-changing habits to be successful in the hereafter. Every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. is the cornerstone for a successful society. How can we maintain a successful marriage? Join us in this journey where we learn how to plan for it, execute it, maintain it, and end it according to Islam. Grasp the unique philosophy of Islam to make marriages successful in marriage and divorce. Next on Peace TV. Now we're going to uh, entertain some questions. We're going to have three microphones. Uh, one for the sisters, we've got one here, one here. So I'm going to ask you please, inshallah, to keep your questions very brief. Only one question. And uh, also if you can state your name and your profession. And uh, inshallah, we'll start with um, this one down here, inshallah, please. Asalaamu As Alaikum. My name is Muzammil Sheikh and I'm a management student. Jazakallah brother for giving such a wonderful speech to us. My question is, most of, our, of time in our today's scenario is devoted to learning and then after it earning the money. In this, we often tend to forget what is the Islamic. We need to follow Islam also at the same time. So in that situation, what we need to do? First of all, when we're living in a society right now, especially you know, city folks and so forth, for us, time seems to go very very fast time seems to go very very fast and we tend to forget about Islam or forget about to study about Islam or read the Quran we don't have time for this and that but let me give you something that you can use and put to practice and it will help you inshallah first of all you have to understand that the most beloved deeds in the sight of Allah are that which is consistent the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ The best deeds are that which are consistent, even if it's just a small amount. And so if we are not consistent, then you tend to, let's say, you know, okay, during Ramadan, mashallah, we take the Qur'an, and we read the Qur'an. And then after Ramadan, it's like it collects cobwebs and dust on the shelves, and we, not, we barely take it except for maybe Jum'ah or Friday. No. What you want to do 
is set a daily minimum requirement for yourself. Let's say, for example, every day make the conviction to read at least one page only of the Quran. Or you can just say maybe half a page. But when you make this conviction, make the intention to do this for the rest of your life. No matter how tired you are, every day at least half a page before I go to sleep. And then every week, every day, I'm going to give some sadaqah, even if it's just one rupee. And then every month, I'm going to at least visit one sick person. At least one. At least one sick person. And with all the deeds, pick something, just very small, and be consistent. Once you are consistent for one whole year maybe, then add some more to it. When it comes to fasting, for example, just say, you know what, every single month, I'm going to do at least three days of fasting. And if you are consistent doing this, then you see your iman going up also. And then spend some time, for example, but don't put too much. Don't say that, inshallah, I'm going to pray eight rak'ahs every single night. Because if you do that, eight rak'ahs of sunnah, tahajjud, every night at least eight. And you just started, you haven't even done it consistently, two rak'ahs yet. I mean, you haven't even been consistent to the masjid to, for fajr, two rak'ahs of fajr before fajr. You're not even consistent with that. Be realistic with yourself. Pick something that is very easy to do and then do it continuously because that's the most important thing. And once you do that, you find that, okay, today you have a list. Maybe put it at your door. Okay, what did I do today? So before you go to sleep, hey, you know what? I didn't memorize my ayah yet. Wait, I haven't read my yet. I haven't given sadaqah yet. Tomorrow I'm going to give two rupees instead. And so be consistent. Once you're consistent, you'll see that religion will continually be a part of your life, even though you're continuing on your normal routine. But just make small, pick small things and be consistent. Whether it's a monthly act, a weekly act, a daily act, or an hourly act. Oh, you know what? This is an hour. I don't think I remembered Allah yet. Let me say subhanallah 33 times. Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times, at least every hour to remember that. Or maybe just say Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Walla ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. Or something like that, but make something hourly, monthly, weekly, and be consistent for the rest of your life. And this is how the companions were. They picked some deeds that they loved, and they were consistent for the rest of their lives. Then that's how you... Strengthen your determination because you get used to it because it becomes a habit when you do it and then it becomes easier for you. So anything, your manners and also your character is built upon consistency. Once you're consistent with that, then it becomes part of your character. If somebody tells the truth one time or two times, you don't call this person truthful. But if he's always truthful, then you say, he is truthful. And that's part of his character. And so you want to be a good Muslim? Then be consistent in the good deeds. And then you can become a righteous person by being continuous and consistent. Remember this hadith. خير الأعمال أدوامها وإنقل The best deeds, the best, are that which is most consistent, even if it's a small deed. MashaAllah. Okay, uh, we're going to have a question. Uh, the brothers at the back there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brother. I have a clarification from you. The person who used to torture Bilal Razilatanu, what was his fate? Whether he accepted Islam or not? Can you clarify? The person who used to torture Bilal, his name was Umayyah ibn Khalaf. In the battle of Badr, he was killed in the battle of Badr. He was amongst those people who were killed. He did not accept Islam. Just to remind you, inshallah, please keep the uh, questions related to the topic as well. Because there are many answers that everyone's looking for here, inshallah. So we'll keep it on topic. Now just to remind you as well, any non-Muslims, this is a perfect opportunity for you today. Anything you want to ask about Islam, 
please do. Please um, feel welcome. Now, the sisters, any more questions there? Go ahead, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sitra Abdullah. I came from Ethiopia. My profession is I am urban management masters. I have, and I work in heritage office. My question is that, as we know, the future belongs to Islam. Though at present, because of uh, other regions, example like Protestants attract Muslims by giving them money or providing them materials so that they change their religion because uh, they are weak economically. So what can we do about this issue? Well, Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. You see like missionaries and bringing forth and giving things to Muslims. The thing is, if you, if you see some of these things occurring and happening, you know, if, try, to also, try to also combat this. Anytime you see people making an effort to do something, you have to do a counter effort also to help the Muslims who are in that area. So if they can bring together people and help the Muslims, we should also try to do something of the same way also. So you can't just sit there. So anytime, especially if they're working. You know, I remember sitting again, you know, I travel a lot, so I'm on a plane. And I'm very tired. I only got like maybe two hours of sleep the night before. I was actually planning, planning to go to sleep on the plane. And then there was this woman next to me. She was a Christian woman. And I was about to go to sleep because I was so tired. I didn't have get enough sleep that night. And so she looked over to me and she said, because she saw that I was Muslim, I was reading the Quran, just memorizing and reviewing and so forth. And she looked over and she knew that I was Muslim. So she said, you know, can I talk to you? Right when I was about to go to sleep, she said, can I talk to you? I feel it's my obligation to let you know about Jesus. I see she herself says, I feel it's my obligation to let you know about Jesus. Immediately I said, Subhanallah, this woman, with her she has falsehood with her, and I know I have the truth. And I'm going to sleep and she's trying to make da'wah to me. Why should I be sleeping? Why am I going to sleep? You know, she has that in her mind. That she also mentioned, you know, I, it's because I want goodness for you. And so I turned around and I said, I also want goodness for you. And so we had a debate on the plane. That whole time, sleep went away. And we had a debate on the plane. And at the whole plane, actually, the area, everyone was listening to it. Everybody was listening. We were speaking about Islam the whole time. But the thing is, you see that when somebody does something, it should give you motivation now. Remember I was like tired, about to go to sleep? Hey, you know what? If they're working, why am I sleeping? If they're trying to bring people to their religion and they have falsehood, then it's time to sleep is over. I got to wake up. Now we have to do something about it. And that's why when you see them going around and spreading and you see them, that should motivate you because you have the truth with you. I and mean, you have the truth with you and they don't have the truth with them. So we should be motivated when we see that. So when something like that happens, then you get together with the sisters. You get together with the brothers and you try to do something about it. And that should help us to motivate us actually when we see that and not continue to sleep at all. Because if we have the truth with us, then we should be the ones who are going forward and giving this effort. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam.